piggyback back up for just one sec. You, mm -hmm. you mentioned that with the older Z-score program, in the case of your daughter, you know, you had mm -hmm. too wide of a net. Right. I didn't use the old and one on her, you, but and yeah. You said, and you said, and that, and that lets oh, most of the brain just sort of run wild. Run amok. Yep. Run. Now, could you just say a little, I just want to make sure I really follow you on that. Okay, Why sure. Why is it bad to have too wide a net? Okay, because let's think about it again. If we want to get out towards those deviant yeah, Z scores, okay. Yeah. So let's say we have to set the window at 2.5, but it was at plus or minus 2.5. Yeah. Okay. If I have to set it to 2.5 to keep the percentage of Z scores that can fall within that realm yeah. up towards 70 or so, well, now I got a five standard deviation window, and mathematically, it's not a lot of. I mean, it's Five standard deviations is almost like the whole population, isn't it? Yeah. Something ridiculous like that? Right. Don? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's not giving you any push towards normal, really, because things that are OK, that were normal, were able to get worse. Yeah. And clinicians were giving some results back saying, well, you know, for certain clients, it's doing really good, but these other clients start, came with these symptoms. Those got a little better, but now they got these symptoms. And then looking at the cues of pre and post, you saw, well, wait a second, that was normal on the cue, but now we have these other things showing up. Well, as soon as we were able to put that second threshold and tighten up the bottom side, that residual fallout didn't happen anymore. You know, in other words, it was like adding a playground guard. There was only one guard, and it's trying to do the whole playground, and there's kids running everywhere, and then getting one on each side and keeping everything herded. It's like one guy on a horse trying to control a herd versus life, two. Or one lifeguard having it. Right. You look, this is your end of the pool. Right. This is my end of the right. Pool. Yeah. So can you not um, run the simulation No, you can't. Because it's not, that's the Thatcher software. Gotcha. Go ahead, Don. So are you telling us we need to go to a different protocol if we want to bring up the downside? Right. We're, and we're going to go to do this. Yeah, I just wanted to start where Z scores started. Or he's suggesting you can move that CP and you can down. Absolutely, you can. Here's what you can do. For instance, if I said I'm at 1.3, so let's say I left it at 1.3. Now this is not on a person's head. This is just a random noise signal. So I don't have maybe the deviant Z scores that I might see with somebody that came in with a problem. But right now you see that my percentage. Yeah, I'd say it's probably more in the 65 range. Okay, so let's say I take that C key. And that's the percent that all of the Z scores are falling within, within plus or minus 1.3. Percent of the time. That right. Okay. Okay. And all the Z scores, including the connectivity Z scores, or just all 248. The percentage of 248 Z scores that are falling. <laughs> within this window of plus or minus 1.3 right now is approximately 65 percent. Well, what did you just adjust? The C key, this percentage right here, the 6.5. So you had it before at? It was at 70. 70. Yeah. OK. okay. So what you, what's that display called? This display is wide trend events. Wide trend events? OK. So now let's talk about these for a second. When I look at this 6.5, it's representing the green line that I know is hard to see on this monitor, but there's a green line through there. Can you see that? That's the threshold. Any time that white line that represents the z-scores that fall within that plus or minus 1.3 are represented on the screen by this white line. This is not EEG. OK? Does that make sense? What is it? Basically, yes. Okay. This is the Z scores that are falling within 1.3 plus or minus standard deviation. Okay. And that red line is a 1.5 minus? No. The red line we haven't talked about yet. The 1.3 right here is our standard deviation window, our bullseye. We've said, okay, plus or minus 1.3. Look at 248 different variables. How many of them are falling within that variable? Whichever that fall in that variable, display on the screen in a white line. Then set a threshold that says, when I get above the threshold, give me a sound. The threshold's the 65, which happens to be the percent. 
Okay. But you don't Percent know of the time. Of those 248 variables, you're actually absolutely correct. You do not know which variable is outside the realm. I but the beautiful it. thing is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The brain figures it out. Absolutely. So maybe only, you know, one or ten of those 248 were causing the symptoms. But some, but well, but then. usually it's a combination of things that cause symptoms, not one component. Okay. So what you're looking to do is instead of training just theta down somewhere, you're looking at the whole system and saying, what is the optimal range everything should be in? Okay. And you're massaging, they're treating it as a system instead of a site. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean by that? Yeah. So we're no longer looking at we're going to train one component at one site and not know what else is happening all the way around it. Now we're taking a wider montage, usually F3, F4, P3, P4, something like that, a nice big long square, and you're getting a, a more of a global look because you're looking at the connectivity between the front, the back, the left, the right, and the diagonals. Before you were just looking at, you might just be training at one site. But the problem is you didn't know what was happening on the other side of the head. But, okay, for example, say there's a problem in the P3 area, mm -hmm. right? And yet the other areas of the brain, um, some, there may be some slight abnormalities. Mm -hmm. um, and those are able to, 65% of the time, mm -hmm. be within your, your parameters. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's causing the ding and the feedback. But maybe it's not the P3 area that happened to be one of those 248 But it's pieces. whatever's basically outside of the window that becomes the training variable. Any of the four channels that you Right. Okay. So what's outside is the training variable. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so whatever it is. Because the good thing is the brain is flexible and the brain is moving around continuously. So even that most deviant z-score at some point in time is probably dropping into that window and dropping into that window for a moment in time and dropping into that window. And then when it does that, there's feedback given and there's feedback given and there's feedback given. Okay. Okay, and you can adjust two things. You can adjust not only the size of the window, but you can adjust the percentage of z-scores you're requiring the brain to fit within that window. Okay. Now, what makes it better for the real deviant z-scores is when you go to this new protocol, which we're gonna look at shortly, that has an upper and lower, and you can tighten down the window, mm -hmm. okay? What does it give us the capability to do? To go after those deviants in that, instead of 65%, mm -hmm. people get this up to 92 and 93. Mm -hmm. So now you only have 7% of 248 that are the training variable. Everything else is in the realm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 